Hello, sports fans and baseball fans and, you know, fans of really any sport because today's discussion centers on uh, replays that you would do. Um, and they can be replays of any sport, basketball, football, baseball, hockey. Um, and um, uh, the inspiration for this video came from two sources. First, um, the first source was um, a channel that I have been watching a lot of uh, lately, the Baseball Replay Journal. The, the guy on that channel, he plays some games, um, but he does a lot of just, you know, thought-provoking discussion about replays and about uh, replay games like Stratomatic and um, uh, APA and, uh, and various other. Uh, games, and he delves into the history of baseball a lot, um, which is kind of interesting. And he had a video uh, called uh, "Make Your Replay Yours," and it was an interesting video that I watched. And I will link to that video in the description in case you are interested in watching that. But uh, a couple of the things that he touches on in that video are uh, playing games. Like when you do a replay playing all the teams, you play every team, not, so I'm getting the sense he's not really talking about the computer or if he was talking about a computer game, you set every game to manual and you actually play all the games. But, um, you know, he was talking, I think, um, primarily about like card and dice replays. And I get the sense that he was, uh, that his intent was to talk about doing like uh, older seasons because he talks about how if you do a replay in that way where you run every game, you run every team, you make the lineups and the pitching rotations, you get to know the players. You get to be, you get to intimately know them a lot more through the replay. And of course, you know, today's game, um, well, first of all, it would be easier to do, uh, particularly a card and dice replay, of a season from you know back in the you know before the the fifties, because you only have a limited number of teams. You only have like eighteen teams back then. To do a replay now uh, of a season right now in the modern uh, day, there, I mean it's fifteen games just to get through one day. So, um, whereas you would only need like nine games to get through a day if you did a season from the past. But we all know the players from today, too. I mean, we don't need to do a replay to get to know the players because they're all over the media. They're all over the sports shows. When you watch a game, which is one of the pet peeves of mine, when you watch a game, they, they always talk to the managers. They talk to certain players. They talk to players when they're in the field. They ask them what their favorite, you know, uh, stuffed animal is. I don't really care about that stuff. But anyway, I digress. We know a lot about today's players, but we don't know a lot about the players from the olden days. And maybe we know, we think we know about players like Babe Ruth and, um, you know, Lou Gehrig and players like that. But it's those nitty gritty guys. It's those guys that play every day, but they're not Babe Ruth. You get to know those guys intimately when you do a replay and when you control every team yourself. And I also got an email recently from uh, someone who watches the channel quite a bit and uh, likes the content. And uh, he had a thought provoking question that I think any replay gamer, especially of the modern day game, would need to answer for themselves. And uh, that is. If you were to do, say, a 2023 or going forward 2024, 2025 replay, making it your own, let's say you don't like the DH rule, or any rule for that matter, what rules do you decide not to use? For myself, if I were doing a 2023 or 2024 replay, 
I, I wouldn't use the ghost runner on second. And yes, I know, he's not really a ghost runner. He's really a real person. But that's what I call him because I think the rule is stupid. And if I were doing a replay going forward, I would not use the runner on second in extra innings. I just wouldn't use it. And uh, and then the, the uh, person who wrote to me, I told him that. I, I said I wouldn't use that rule. And so that's uh, he said that inspired him to potentially not use it himself. Um, and you know, and, and it's your replay. So if you want to follow the rules exactly they were the way they were, that's fine. If you want to play players like if you want to if you want to go through the box scores and you want to play all the players the way that they played as much as they played, that's fine too. Or if you want to just say, hey, this is my replay. I'm making it my own, and I am going to decide who plays and how much they play. That is also a very valid uh, concern. But now, what about going forward from 2023 and back to my original question? Say you don't like the uh, you don't like the DH rule, so you want to do pitcher bat. Or you like the traditional, the way it was prior to 2020, and you want to do National League teams with um, the pitcher bat and American League teams with the DH. Well, going forward, there will be no more pitcher bat. So how would you handle that? How would you decide what the pitchers were? Like, I mean, you know, you could still use, your obviously, the pitcher hitting cards from the past, but you would have to determine... Is a guy a one, a hitter one? Is he a hitter two? Is he a hitter eight? You don't know how to, to do that. Um, the person that wrote to me, I, he, did, um, he said that his idea would be to just roll, roll a dice to determine you know, how many players are hitter ones, how many players are hitter twos, and what players are what pitchers are hitter ones and hitter twos. And uh, from my, from my uh, perspective, I would say you would make um, all relievers hitter ones because they don't hit all the time anyway. And I don't remember um, if he said that he would do that, that he would treat relievers that way, but mainly starters. Uh, you know, how would you determine whether they're a hitter one or hitter two if you didn't know? Now, I think um, one thing you could do if you're talking about like right now, like 2023, 2024 replay, you for players for pitchers who um, did hit during the uh, time when pitchers were hitting, you could just refer to their, you know, Strat used to make pitcher hitting cards for individual pitchers, um, and, but they also rated them as, you know, what kind of a hitter they were. I don't know if Straddle rate them for what kind of a hitter they are going forward because they wouldn't have anything to base it on. Or they might make everybody a one because they didn't hit. But if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to try to say, um, you know, a good example is Bumgarner. Um, Madison Bumgarner is a notoriously pretty good hitter. Um, so are other guys like, I think, Lorenzen. I think he was a good hitter, too. So guys like that that you know, hey, these guys were good hitters. I could make them a 6. I could make them a 7, something like that. I guess you could use that method for players who were um, uh, pitcher who did hit um, and then just use their rating. And then do some kind of a dice roll or some kind of a determination for players that um, never did, pitchers who never did hit uh, in the majors. But going way forward, like you get down to, you get into 2028 um, and you're doing a replay after the 2028 season or the 2029 season, you're not really going to have very many guys uh, that you could look historically and see what kind of hitters they were. So you would have to use some kind of a dice, uh, rolling the dice to determine uh, how they did, and um, you know, and, and it would be, you know, you're making the replay yours, so it's up to you. Do you want to use the pitcher bat? Are you a traditionalist? I mean, I consider myself to be a baseball traditionalist, so 
Um, but as far as the pitcher bat goes, I'm I'm okay with doing the DH. I mean, it um, it takes out some of the strategy, but it also makes the game easier. The game flows easier because you don't have to specifically take out a guy and put in a pinch hitter because he's a pitcher and he can't hit. So um, I'm okay with with the DH rule. But I hate the guy on second rule. And um, the shift, I don't know how you would handle the shift. Um, I didn't really... I didn't really care one way or the other about whether a team shifted or not. I just didn't like baseball mandating that you cannot shift because that takes a lot of the manager's um, uh, autonomy out of that decision. So, um, so there, you know, just some thought-provoking ideas um, as you do your replays. Um, Baseball lends itself a lot more to those kinds of questions. Would you use this? Would you use that? What rules would you use? What rules wouldn't you use? It's not as much of a thing in football. Um, football is going to be mandated, like particularly in Stratomatic, uh, it's going to be mandated by the player personnel you have. If you have a good passing quarterback, you'll pass, whether... It's the 1970s, or it's the uh, you know the the 2010s. Um, but do you use the three-point conversion? Do you allow the three-point conversion, or do you say no? We're only going to do a uh, an extra point after a touchdown. You have to kick an extra point. You know that, that's up to you. And again, that's a rule I don't really care one way or the other about. I would probably just use whatever rule happened for that particular season. Um, I don't know, like, there's hockey guys out there that are diehard hockey guys. They might know if there were rules. Well, there are. I mean, the overtime rule. Are you going to do an overtime at all? Or does the game end after three periods? Um, if you do an overtime, are you only going to do a five-minute overtime? Are you going to do a one-period overtime? Of course, you can make up your own rules, too. You could just play until the game ends um, with somebody winning. Um Again, I wouldn't do something like a shootout. I don't like the sh- uh, again, that's another rule. I don't really like the shootout idea. I'm like, you know, either end it after some kind of small overtime or end it right after the game and say it was a tie. And the old I love the old system where you got two points for a win, one point for a tie, no points for a loss. And you could just say when the game ended, if it was a tie, you could say each each team got a point, you know. So, uh, and, and and if somebody wins in overtime, do you use that same, that system and give the winner two points and give the loser one point because they took it to overtime? See, which doesn't really make sense. Because in the old days, when I was a kid, growing up with hockey, there was only two points for every game. Just two points available. If you won, you got both points. If you uh, tied, you got one. And if you lost, you got none. But it doesn't make any sense because now you're saying, well, there's two points available if it, if it ends in regulation. The team that won got two points and the team that lost got zero. But if it goes to overtime, then there's three points available and the team that wins gets two and the team that lost got, gets one. So these are all questions that you have to ask yourself when you set up your own replays, and how do you decide those things? How um, do you go with uh, the way that you would that when 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 you grew up? I mean, I think that that's one of my friends says. Oh, you just you cry all the time. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I want baseball the way it was when I was a kid. Well, yeah, I do. So that's the those are the the uh, that's the system that I would use and that I would like more than um, you know than how they do it today. Um, case in point, get rid of the ghosty on second. I would not do it. So um, a lot of thought provoking ideas and questions. I will uh, put a link to the video from the uh, baseball uh, replay journal guy. Um, I don't know what his name is. I don't think he ever says his name. Or maybe he does. If you do, if you know what it is, if you watch the channel and you know what it is, leave it in the comments. 
Um, but, uh, you know, I'm giving him a shout out because I do watch a lot of his channel and I like some of the, uh, the things that he discusses, talks about old time games and old time seasons. But uh, I guess that's going to be it for me right now. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.